Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my portable podcasting setup that fits in a backpack. So if you're not familiar with podcasting, it's basically a format where I can discuss through audio my ideas, tell stories, tips, advice, and I also have my own podcast where I interview other successful creators, video makers that I'm interested in or collaborate with and get their stories and their advice and their tips on their own journey in what they're doing. So it's a great way to consume information without always needing to watch the video. Because it's audio focused, you can listen to it in the car, you can listen while you're cleaning your room or doing something else or working out. So it's a great format, more long form to just have a conversation with someone and allow everyone to listen in. So you can actually find my podcast on my YouTube channel and website. It's on iTunes, all that. Just type in the Justin O.D. Show podcast. I have 22 episodes up so far. I'd love for you to check it out. But a lot of people have been asking me how I actually conduct the interviews. What's the equipment? Because they're interested in doing something similar themselves. So that's what I have here is this bag full of goodies. And I'm going to talk about what they actually are and just give you a general overview and I'll leave a link to all the specifics in the description. So before we get started, let's just talk about some different formats of podcasting and audio recording that I've actually done. One behind me you see this uh, Shure SM7B. This is a very sta like uh, standard mic. You'll see it in most setups. It's kind of like an industry standard, radios, other podcasts. And this is great for if you have an in-studio setup, a setup that doesn't move, that you're not traveling with. And this is what I use to record my tutorials by myself. And also when I was doing Skype call podcast interviews where I was also at this desk, I would use this. I would say that this is a little bit better of a mic than this one that I have in my hands, which is the Shure SM58. But there's also the price difference and the portability and all that. So. This mic requires a little bit more power, a little bit more processing, that's why I have this Scarlett USB interface as well as a DBX preamplifier. That way I can just run it straight into the computer and it's already processed and ready to go. But I can't really take all of this stuff with me easily when I'm traveling. And on top of that, four of these microphones is over a thousand dollars, whereas four of these cost one of these. So that's why I chose to go with this for the portable setup. It's also from recommendation that I modeled after Tim Ferriss, who also has a really good video like this, breaking down his podcast in a bag setup. And uh, he's someone who I think runs a successful podcast, who I look up to. So that's for the Skype and the solo and the at-home stuff. If I was to move into a dedicated studio, I'd probably invest in some gear like this. This is a Rode PSA 1, really easy to use when I'm here. But let's talk about what's in this bag when I'm traveling. So first of all, this is the microphone that I use for this setup at the moment. It's a Shure SM58, like I said. This runs about $100, I believe, and it's a great microphone that for handheld, it's portable, the sound quality is great. You have to be happy about what you're making. If you upload a video, and I mean, everyone's hard on themselves. Like I upload videos constantly where I'm like, ah, like I could have done it better. Like I'm sure you've had that same feeling before. Yeah, yeah. I just have this pop filter over top, just to some extra insurance against the hissing and the popping noises. And I have four of them. It comes in this little sure faux leather type of plastic pouch. And in it, it comes with a microphone arm stand so if you were going with the stand setup you could pop that on there and screw this on a microphone but you'll also need to get an XLR cable with them so this is the your cable store cable these are pretty cheap they're like depending on the length that you choose um, 10 to 20 bucks and this actually plugs right into the bottom of the microphone clicks in and then what I use to record the audio since I'm not bringing this whole computer setup with me is the Zoom H6 portable recorder and that's this right here. So this is the Zoom H6. They have the H4, the H different models, but I use the H6 because it has four inputs so that if I do a group chat I can use four microphones and it even allows you to record from the top there as well. So the cable 
just plugs right in to the outlets here and they're labeled mic one, two, three, four. It has a whole bunch of different features. I might do a dedicated review of this. But basically this turns on on the side. It has some amplification options. I find that with this microphone, setting it to about six and a half works fine. And you can plug in as many microphones as you have guests and just get to talking and you see the levels start moving as you go. But just to double check, uh, just to hear how everything really sounds. I do like having a pair of headphones with me. I suppose you could use any headphones you want, but I use these. These are the Sennheiser HD280 Pros. I've been using these for over a year now on my tutorials and whatever. I use whatever I do. And these are noise canceling closed back. So you really can just monitor the audio. And you can monitor the audio of what's coming out of your microphone. So. I don't keep these on the whole interview. I know some podcasts have everyone wear headphones, but this only has one headphone jack, and I just prefer to put it on in the beginning, make sure everyone tests their levels. Sometimes some guests are a little bit quiet or they hold the microphone in different ways. Yo, yo, yo. Yo. Testing. Yo, yo, yo. Yo. So I just make sure everyone sounds about equal and balanced, and then I take them off for the remainder of the interview. But it is crucial to have those just to make sure, like when I was interviewing Brian Barczyk recently, uh, there was some animal noises in the background, so if I didn't have those on, I probably wouldn't have recognized it and cleaned it up as best as we could before we started and recorded a whole episode, and then you realize the audio isn't the best. Now when it comes to microphone stands, I've been choosing to go handheld recently simply because it's more portable. Uh, it does cause a little bit more issues maybe if the guest doesn't hold the microphone properly or they start doing funny things with it. I was using in previous trips this ProLine mic stand and I do like the looks of this one. It just kind of screws right in and you have a different... It just kind of screws right in and you have adjustable lever on all sides and the microphone can stand on the edge. The problem is this base plate is pretty heavy compared to the rest of it so that it's balanced. And it's okay when you just have two of them, it's not so bad. I wouldn't say they fit in a bag specifically, but if you had a separate duffel bag or something, they could fit. It just gets really heavy to carry four of these around and the mics especially when you're traveling through TSA or whatever. TSA was not happy with me when I brought these. The guy said, what do you have in here, bricks? And uh, it was heavy on me as well, because I didn't have a rolly bag. So that's why I stopped doing that, and I just decided to see how handheld works, because I saw Tim Ferriss do it as well, and it worked. But again, you can get smaller little tabletop mics, which I might play around with. Uh, and there's no right or wrong answer, like I said. Stands, there's so many different stands. There's arms, tabletop mics, uh, arm, different type of arms. So another thing about this is it's just battery powered. It takes some AA batteries, which is really useful. You don't have to plug it into a power source. You can just literally set it on a table or the floor or wherever. And it's totally detached, portable by itself. And this is all you need to record, as many microphones as you want. So you have the XLR cable, the microphone, the pop filter, this and then if you so choose stands if you want if you have a more dedicated setup now let's talk about actually recording the podcast this is something that i'm still building up at first uh, i didn't even record video on the podcast because i was doing them via skype but i actually started just using my iphone to record them if you guys didn't know most dslrs and like the camera that i'm shooting this on have limits for example you can't record more than 30 minutes in a row, which could be annoying if you're recording an hour-long conversation. So a simple solution was I have this iPhone with like 256 gigabytes of storage, and this can record until the battery's full, which is like five or six or seven hours or something, I believe. And it's not so bad. It's a 1080p camera, but it's just one angle. I'm always of the belief that you should just use the best that you have now. In the future, the, the different formats that I could do are getting a higher end camcorder that can record over 30 minutes, and even further than that, doing a multi-cam setup where you have one angle at 
both guests, one at guest one and one at me, the interviewer, and switch between those different angles. That's a bit more of a professional setup, which I might experiment with in the future. But I know plenty of very successful podcasts that record with an iPhone video or just don't even record the video at all like Tim Ferriss has done for a lot of the beginning of his career. So I just bring my iPhone, I turn it on airplane mode. I do use an app on the phone called Filmic Pro. Uh, this is something that allows you to lock exposure and also lock some of the color and frame rate settings. I, I got this strictly because sometimes when I was recording there's clouds in the background, the exposure does go up and down throughout the thing and the audio would start to lose track a bit because it's variable frame rate for some reason so I would have to convert it again on my computer. Complicated stuff but the Filmic Pro app allowed me to lock some of those settings so I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks but it was worth it. Shout out to Daniel Schiffer for convincing me to get it when we were recording his episode. But I either bring just a small portable tripod like this and just set it up somewhere or I sometimes do bring the full on Manfrotto tripod and I've actually reviewed some of these tripods on my channel but I use this to set the phone on and just get a good clean angle of the two people having a conversation which you can see in all of my episodes so that works well for me I just make sure I'm in airplane mode as far as battery I do like to bring this portable brick charger with me this one's by Anchor I found that it lasts a lot of juice time and uh, I like to just keep it plugged into the phone and set on something so I make sure that it doesn't die uh, I believe I could get away with not having it, but I like to have it there. And that's basically it. Once I'm done recording, I sync up the audio from the microphones and the video from what I was recording with, and then I just take it into Premiere, edit it, add overlays and titles if I so choose, color grade, all that stuff. And that's basically it. That's my portable setup in a bag. It's very not I would say low budget but it's very DIY almost I'd say so you can check out my podcast for yourself and see if you think the quality is good if you would change some of these and there's a lot more tutorials I could do on individual pieces of gear here that I haven't reviewed yet on the channel and just what I've learned through interviewing people in general there's a, a lot that I've learned about listening asking questions, uh, stumbling, rambling, all that. So I'll leave a link to all of this stuff and I really would love for you guys to check out the podcast. It's something I've been working hard on and I think provides a lot of value and entertainment alongside all these tutorials that I've been doing. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Go follow me on social media at Justin OD Show on Instagram. I actually put podcast snippets and highlights up on there and subscribe to the channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all future episodes and videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. A lot of people get hung up, like you said, on the views and the, the comments and things like that. I think it starts with your content. You have to be happy about what you're making. If you upload a video and I mean, everyone's hard on themselves. Like I upload videos constantly where I'm like, ah, like I could have done it better. Like I'm sure you've had that same feeling before. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's okay. But